Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I want to show you how you can sanitize user input to ensure that nobody is writing malicious code that's going to be run on your page. So I've got this little first name bio field here. And if I add my name and I add a bio and I hit submit, what's going to happen is it's going to call this handle form submit, which will take the user's input for their first name and their bio. It'll add it as an HTML string and then add that as an inner HTML of this div right here called profile. What that means is I'm letting the user write HTML on my page, which means if they know what they're doing, they can actually write malicious code. Now you might think they would come in here and say something like this and add a script tag, and then inside the script tag, say something like alert, hacked. That actually won't do anything. If I come in here and hit submit, nothing happens. What you would do, and this might seem counterintuitive, is you would actually add an image tag. Then you could add just no source at all, or you could have a false source, or you could have something that actually works. Um, depending on what you do, if it doesn't work, you'd say on error, I want you to run this script. So I could come in here and now say alert and pass it hacked. And now if I hit submit, it'll actually say hacked. So they're running actual JavaScript on your page. Now, obviously they could do way worse things than just say hacked. For instance, they could come in here and they could write a script where whenever the image doesn't load properly, it changes the URL where the user is going. So if I come in here and hit submit, it doesn't load, it's now gonna redirect me to Google instead of the site that I was supposed to be on. You don't wanna let users write HTML on your page because they can write malicious code if they know what they're doing. So how do you fix this? Well, there are two methods you could use that I'm gonna show you today. The first one is pretty basic and most of the time it can work for you. That would just be to come in here and to say, let's change this inner HTML to inner text and see if that'll still meet our needs. Whenever you get the chance, always try to do inner text instead, because what that's gonna do if I come in here and add the same exact thing, instead of adding it as HTML, it'll just be a string and that's not gonna hurt anybody. Now in this use case, it doesn't actually work because we really do want an H2 and we really do want a paragraph tag. And so this doesn't work for us, which is when we should reach for that second tool called Dom Purify. The Dom Purify is just a library here and you can load it with NPM. You can also just grab a CDN link. And whenever you do, you'll just write this little function Dom Purify.sanitize and then pass it some string of HTML. What that will do is it'll strip out any of this malicious code and it will become simply this. All right, so this is what Dom Purify will do for you and it's pretty easy to get going. Now, I've, I'll add links for these in the description, but I've just grabbed this CDN link and I have added it to the top of this HTML document. Let me go ahead and uncomment that so it's now loading. Notice obviously it's above my app.js file and that way I can access Dom Purify within this. Let's write a little function. We're gonna call it clean uh, data. And we'll take in some user input and then let's return out of this dom purify dot sanitize and then we're gonna pass it the user input. So whatever we pass in here, we're going to sanitize and then send it back out. That means all we have to do is come in here and say user input and then we're gonna pass this entire string and then that string will come down here and become the inner HTML and that should work just fine. Now, to make sure we know that it's all working properly, let's do a couple other things. Let's console log, first of all, um, it after it's been sanitized, and then let's also console log it before it's been sanitized. And then I'll jump back over this way. Let's pull up the console, and then let's go ahead and add this in. So I'll say Chris, and then let's grab that same on error event, hit submit, and I called this thing the wrong thing. <laughs> uh, this should be clean data. Sorry about that. All right, if I come back over this way, let's do the same thing. So I'll say Chris up here, and then for the bio, I'll add that same thing, hit submit, and now you see beforehand, it actually says, hey, this is what it would look like. This is after Dom Purify has stripped out any malicious code. So you can see the advantage immediately and everything looks like it's supposed to. Obviously their image didn't load, but that's their own fault for uh, loading an image that doesn't exist. Now you might say, okay, well, that's all fine, well, and good, but like, why does this matter? They would just be coming to their own profile and loading this from the server and messing themselves up. If they pass somebody this URL, it's just gonna start back over. They're not running malicious code, they're typing it. Well, that's the use case for this scenario. However, let's come over this way and I'm gonna change a few things. 
Let's get rid of, let's add a, an inactive tag here and an inactive tag here. And then I'm going to remove this inactive tag. And now we've got a search form. The search form down here, whenever I search for something, it's going to display that down below. So if I say hi, it'll say you searched for hi. And it's doing that by adding it as inner HTML. But because this is a query, the way it's doing it is after page load, it's looking for whatever the query is up in the URL and adding that as inner HTML. Now, the trouble here is that when I pass this page to somebody else, this is an actual URL that I could send them to, which means if I came in here, I could do something really bad. Let's say I came in here and instead of adding some alert message, I actually said, I want all the cookies for this page. And I could write a function to send myself all the cookies when a user visits any given page. Now, what that means is I could come in here, hit submit, and it actually shows all these cookies. Now, I'm not sending it anywhere. I'm just showing the cookies. That means as well that if I come in here and I copy this and open a new tab and send somebody this link, it'll do that for them as well. That means I'm getting both cookies that are available on this page. And this one is the session ID, which I could use to then log in as somebody and do whatever I want with their profile. So you can see the danger, especially when you're altering the URL that and using that same data down here as inner HTML. Now, this is the perfect use case for actually changing this simply to inner text. If I do that, and I run the same thing, you'll see it just says document.cookie. That doesn't hurt anybody. However, because we already did the work on sanitize, let's use it down here as well. So we'll do the same thing. What do we call that clean data? Let's call it the right thing this time. And then I will wrap all this and the same thing is gonna happen. Now you might say, okay, well, let's customize this. Is there a way to kind of alter what Dom Purify does? And there is, there are several options for you. If I come back over this way to the GitHub, You'll see that they tell you, uh, let's jump up top here. By default, uh, it supports HTML5, SVGs, and MathML. So in other words, it'll let those three th things through, but it'll strip out anything else. Now you might say, okay, well, I get that, but I don't really want MathML or SVGs allowed. Well, if you, that's the case, you can add this object here and say use profiles HTML true. So let's come back over this way up top. And we're just going to say, add that in right there. That means if somebody comes over here, let's grab an SVG. I've got one right here, just ready for me. And uh, I come over here and I add this here and I hit submit. It's not going to load that SVG. Now, if I change this and do the same thing, once again, come in here and I load the SVG, you see it actually populates right there. Now, you might also say, I also don't want an image tag. Well, that's where you can come down here and there are a couple other options. You can actually further forbid tags that you don't want them using. And again, you would pass this in as an object here and let's come over this way. We've done the use profiles and now we'll do forbid tags and we're gonna change this here to image. Now I can come back over this way and I'm gonna grab an image I've got here and say submit and you'll see that it doesn't populate down this way. Now again, if I remove this here and I come back, you see it actually loads and I don't want that. So you can pass different things in here to make it customized to your needs. In addition to uh, adding special profiles like only allowing HTML and forbidding tags, you can also allow certain tags if you want to limit it even further. By allowing tags though, what you're doing is you're saying, I only want a bold tag. Now they do mention that if you use this allowed tags and the use profiles, use profiles will override this allowed tags. So just don't use them together. But you can see how you can use use profiles and then add your own things that you want to forbid and customize it to exactly what you might need for your site. So the long and short of it all is when you load HTML that the user has provided, you want to always make sure that you sanitize it first so that way nobody can run malicious code on your site. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm no security expert, but I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.